Hello, my friends. This is a black walnut tree that I planted a number of years ago. And this is the first year that it is producing uh, the nuts. And this is the beginning of September. We'll probably have a frost here within the next couple weeks. And uh, the nuts should be falling. But because of all the weeds, I want to harvest these now. And I'm going to use this. I have a number of different purposes. You can use it for uh, staining clothing or type of uh, organic materials. Um, I use it for staining woods. And also, I have used it in the past to cover or stain metal traps for running a trap line, uh, which I did when I was younger. So that uh, the walnut will disguise the scent or the smell of the metal and the uh, human scent that would be on it. So I'm going to pick these. For using stain for clothing, you may need about 15, 20, but I'm going to pick what I can reach and make some stain for that. Also, a friend uh, that's a Navajo, or not Navajo, uh, Mohawk, he does a lot of reenactment, and they use the walnut stain for a lot of their regalia. So let's see what we can get here. This is what I could reach, and uh, there's a half a bucket, and there's probably that much still up on the tree, and we'll just wait for the frost to knock those down. Um, I don't want to climb the tree or damage it. It's still a pretty young tree. And I can check my other trees, see if any of those fruited. So the green will give you the uh, most juice or best dye. Um, they will oxidize and turn brown or black uh, real quick, uh, especially if you cut them open. I'm going to save the nuts, so I'm going to take the husk off and uh, use it that way. You could work it with leaving the nuts in there, uh, but since I eat them, I'm going to take the shells off. Um, when I use this for collecting fishing worms. I would just uh, cover these with water, let them set for a few days to a week. The water will get real dark, almost black. Then you just dump it on the grass and the worms will come out of the ground immediately. Wonderful for going fishing. Here I'm taking these walnuts. Some are getting pretty dry. Uh, this I should have done when it was real green, but it's okay. And I like to use the uh, claw and a claw hammer to dig in. It would be nice if this was a straight claw. But I'm going to take off the husks, save the husks for my dye, and then dry the nuts to eat. And you can see I have rubber gloves on. The uh, sap is yellow. The gloves are blue. It's making the uh, gloves turn green. much easier when it's green. Now what I used to do <clears throat> is leave these set on the road because I had a tree growing right on the side of the road and the cars that would come by would run them over and it would knock all the husk off for me. Then I'd just go out and pick up the, the nuts. But in this case I'm wanting the husk to use as a dye or a stain. My dad used to uh, bring these home and we would put our snow boots on 
and step on the fresh nuts to knock the husk off. <clears throat> then it worked fine. And then when we were done, we would sit there with a hammer and crack these open and eat them. And a, a walnut that's still green has a much different flavor than the dried nuts. So I don't like it to eat a lot of the green ones. Some people like the flavor. I would prefer them to be dry, but you get all kinds of different flavors from lots of different stages. Well, I'm going to keep doing this and see how much husk we can get. After hammering on these and splashing the juice in my eyes, I'm going to plan B. Uh, boy, it really burns. I can see why the worms come out of the ground when you pour that on on the ground. But uh, I don't remember that happening when I was a kid. Maybe uh, you're a little more bulletproof at that age. But what I did is I put enough water in here to cover the nuts. I'm going to let them set. We'll see how they do in a day by day. And uh, then take the nuts off of the, the, the uh, husks. It should soften them and uh, get that juice into the liquid. The liquid is what we wanted to do anyway to uh, get the liquid into, into the water so that that liquid then will become our dye or our stain. And if we want to concentrate it, we just boil it down to it's uh, real thick, evaporate a lot of the water out. This is my dye in this bucket. And this bucket here has the black walnuts with the hulls on them. And it, they were soaking in water. I had enough water to cover the walnuts. And uh, they soaked for about two weeks. So that caused the hulls to break down and it gave up its coloring into the solution. I'm going to use my black walnut dye to dye these canvas bags. And the uh, reason I want them dyed is I don't like the bright white flashing when I'm walking in the woods. So I'm going to use the walnut dye to do this. So the first thing that you do is you want to soak these in clean water. I'm going to use warm, clean water. Okay, now my bags, I have them soaked in warm water and I'm going to put them in to the solution. The warm water acts as the mordant for these and uh, we're just going to leave these in here until they get dark and then we're going to pull them out and let them dry. So the walnut dye is uh, used for organic material. Synthetics, it doesn't dye that well, but organic material, it will bond into it. Here's some shirts that I'm going to dye. These have already been moistened. And we'll see how the color comes out. Here's one more. And you see I'm wearing gloves, and uh, this will dye your skin, and it'll stay on the skin for a number of days before it comes off. I'm going to take the shirts out and I'm going to allow them to dry overnight and that should set the color and then I will wash them.
what I'm doing is I'm rigging out most of the dye, most of the solution. And you can see it's leaving a brown color. All the dark patches, that's bits of the hull. So that'll come off after it's been washed or after it's been dried. These bags have never been washed, so there's probably like a sizing or something on them. So they didn't dye as dark as the shirts. But that's ex very acceptable. That's good. And this one, it's been silk screened. And you can see where the logo is. But the bag, other than where it was screened, died pretty well. Here you can see the walnut dye. <clears throat> and I'm going to reduce it down and store it and, and when I make it thicker it'll be a little stronger and it can be used as a stain or a, yeah, a wood stain. So the storage will be in glass containers of course you gotta make sure you mark them well and uh, to keep any mold from growing you put a little bit of vinegar in the solution. Uh, plastic containers they may uh, eat through the plastic. Um, the gloves that I was wearing, I hardly got any on the gloves and it did come right through the gloves. Here are the items that I dyed with the walnut and the canvas bags. Um, they took a decent color. They're a little bit lighter than what I wanted, but the reason they didn't take the dye as well as these were never washed before and I'm sure that the material, the canvas, had a sizing on it that kept the dye from penetrating too well. But I'm pretty satisfied with that color. That's fine. Would have liked it a little darker. Now the shirts, on the other hand, this one was 100% cotton and it took a dark dye you can see here. This one was the yellow t-shirt and it's not 100% cotton, it's, there's polyester in it. So you can see the difference in color, a little bit lighter. And here, this one was that grayish t-shirt. Again, not 100% cotton, but it took a decent color too. And these have been dried overnight, then washed, and then put in the dryer. So there's no walnut scent whatsoever. Um, and that dye on this should be a permanent color. Well, thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.